Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a lovely 2016 debutante and one of the best car watch co-branding efforts ever by anyone. This is the Zenith El Primero Range Rover, 42 millimeters in ceremony blackened aluminum, it's remarkably scratch-resistant minimalist tribute to both the great off-road brand and Zenith's long-running El Primero chronograph series, as the original Zenith El Primero and Range Rover prototypes actually debuted in the same year, 1969. Now, the watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist wears quite easily. You can see the 42 is a large size traditionally, but by modern standards, it's pretty much a standard men's chronograph size. So 42 millimeters like a moon watch but across the wrist it wears quite differently from the moon watch first and foremost because those are generally featured on bracelets this one on a strap measures a reasonable 50.6 millimeters from lug to lug the spacing between the lugs 21 millimeters so the watch has a nice broad proportional stance and the timepiece neither thick nor thin but at 13 millimeters with a stepped case blank it will slide underneath just about any dress cuff the watch is very light being composed principally of aluminum and sapphire it sits easily even on a smaller wrist. I would recommend it for a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters circumference. Now let's get a little bit closer and take advantage of the details. You can see gorgeous Bridge of Weir leather, perforated. You can see it has a tan coloration and a granular surfacing. It's on a rubber base, so you actually can count on this strap to wear long term as the oils, the moistures, the sweat and grit of the wrist largely will be spared the leather strap, so this leather strap should last a very long time, provided you don't try to swim with it. Now the deployant clasp, as you can see, is a twin trigger deployant, a double deployant in fact, and you can see there are internal ceramic spring-loaded pin snaps to maintain the tolerances of this clasp long term. It's insurance against accidental droppage while donning or removing at bedside. It's also a double fold, which I find is a little bit friendlier to a small wrist and less likely to pinch, plus the twin trigger system ensures that it will never deploy accidentally. Now jumping back to the case, you can see that the case itself is a stark black and all of a matte finish. You have a zirconium oxide coating over an aluminum core, which means that it's very light, yes, but it combines the best features of ceramic, namely scratch resistance, with the best features of metal, namely fracture and shatter resistance. The timepiece features a dramatic box section sapphire. Flat sapphire is the cheapest, domed are the next, and then the most expensive are box section, and that's what Zenith has fit here. And you can see that the Range Rover trim of this particular watch deserves a lush sapphire, which has a little bit of the off-axis distortion effect of a vintage plexiglass. The dial itself features a marginalized chronograph hours register, so it appears a little bit more like a vintage chronograph with a twin register layout. It is a minimal dial with applied indices outboard, and you can see there are graduated rings for the chronograph minutes and constant seconds. There's a flange outboard with a tachymeter scale, though as it is calibrated for units between 350 and 60, probably speeds greater than those you'll experience while driving a Range Rover off-road, maybe one of the SVR models with the superchargers on-road, however. The dial has a wonderful anthracite satin grain that runs top to bottom, almost like brushed stainless steel. It's a lovely effect, and if you turn the watch over, you can see the movement is just as handsome. Zenith El Primero Caliber 400, you can see there's a little bit of Range Rover branding on the case back, and there is very little Range Rover branding on the dial side, so this is a discreet co-branded watch, but the standout is the Range Rover Blazon Zenith El Primero. So you can see Range Rover on the rotor, Range Rover on the case, all of this 100 meters water resistant, 31 joules automatic winding that balances beating away at 36,000 vibrations per hour, 5 hertz or 10 beats per second. You can see that the bi-directional automatic winding system energizes a 50 to 52 hour power reserve. And the watch features a column wheel apparatus, so you can see the blued column wheel interacting with its levers and its horns. So it's a very vocal chronograph in that you can hear it. Take a listen. And it's a very crisp chronograph in that the pusher feel is outstanding. The watch does feature a quick set function, however it does not feature stop seconds. That's 
standard El Primero, and of course it has that weird quirky setting system whereby you actually set the hands in the intermediate position rather than setting the date, and then if you pull the crown out all the way, now you activate the quick set for the date. It's a wonderful old watch in the sense that it has the heart and soul of 1969 with the El Primero caliber, and it perhaps pays tribute to a kinder, gentler, and less adorned era of the Range Rover when they were just a bit spare with synthetic interiors, two doors, big blocky tires, and of course manual transmissions. So this is a watch of the modern era, but I sense that the spirit of vintage Range Rovers is what animates this particular example. You can see this one and make it yours on the watch box. Zenith El Primero Range Rover, headlights at night.